Hi, this is Dr. Steve Vargo, and this is episode 12 of Can I Ask You One Question? And uh, here we dive into the minds of industry experts and, and gurus and thought leaders, and we try to learn one critical thing from them that we can apply to our, our professional, maybe even our personal lives. And today we're going to focus on uh, marketing and, and interacting with the younger generation. And I have with me here today my colleague and friend, Dr. Solomon Gold, who's an international speaker, a practice management consultant, and he owns two private practices in the Twin Cities area. And even though he didn't grace us today with it, he uh, is one of the few people that can pull off a bow tie just perfect. So <laughs> we got the scrubs today, but we'll still, uh, we'll still take it. So thanks so much for doing this, Solomon. Hey, thanks, Steve, for having me. It's a genuine honor to be a part of this great platform. So uh, I appreciate also you letting me do this before I start uh, patient care without the bow tie. <laughs> All right. Uh, you wrote an article recently, which I found really interesting, and it was on the younger generation, uh, millennials, Gen Zers, and how they have different expectations from some of our um, some of our older patients. And I think we all realize that, but you actually made some strategic changes in the practice that had a, um, an impressive impact on your practice revenues. So my question to you, based on your experience, what does the young, younger generation expect from a practice? Yeah, well, thanks for reading the article, Steve. Um, you know, in a time when it's never been more important to be smart or to work smart, not necessarily hard. We're coming out of a, you know, or hopefully uh, near the end of coming out of a global pandemic. And so every aspect of your practice management must be, um, you know, forward momentum. So to your point, I, I deliberately focused on the younger demographics, namely because they are actually, un contrary to the societal perception that baby boomers are the largest demographic or generation rather, the Gen Zers, those currently age 25 and younger, are the largest, and they outnumber the second largest, surprisingly, the millennials by roughly 1 million. So, so knowing that, I uh, developed a, a plan, a marketing plan, an operational plan, and a practice plan on how to best not only acquire those, uh, those individuals as, as patients, but how to work intelligently with them. And to answer your question, We'll focus on both of the generations, the Gen Zers and the Millennials. We'll start with the, the Millennials. You know, Millennials have, let's just say, uh, a lot of um, uh, labels uh, attached to them, and not necessarily all of them are great. Uh, the, the Millennials, however, have a lot of very positive attributes that if you identify those and you capitalize upon those in your practice management, you can be very successful. We'll just start with the basics. Millennials by far are the, are the greatest contributors, contributors to and adopters of telemedicine or that we'll call it technological communication format, even more so shockingly than the Gen Zers. And so I highly encourage all practice owners to capitalize upon any and all technologies that permit convenience and control in the hands of the consumer of the millennial demographic. They love that digital communication, the simple ability to at any time at their schedule, ask a question and have it answered by someone on your team. And these technologies are not expensive. You can find some that are just between 30 and $90 a month. And that simple addition will increase your influx of those patients uh, by, a, by a good margin. Uh, also, when it comes to frames, and uh, how you do your frame board management within your practice. As we all know, that's a, a vital component to our, our revenue as doctors of optometry. Well, the millennials, they are willing to spend more money if they see that you with your frame lines are doing something at a higher level uh, societally or socially. And they specifically love when there's a social cause behind what you're doing. So what I've done and what I encourage all practice owners to do is to find a frame line and contribute and market that you are contributing a certain percentage of the profits towards something great. And it could be local, it could be national or global. Um, now we'll focus quickly on the uh, millennial, the Gen Zers rather. Uh, the Gen Zers, you know, shocking. And you'll have to check your pulse here, Steve, because when I learned this, I had to check mine. And that is that 
the Gen Zers, first and foremost, when it comes to marketing, they do not like idealism. In fact, Gen Zers, if you think about it, they were born into an era when everything about them was judged. And they're on social media outlets left and right. So when they see posts from companies, they like to see that non-idealistic reality, uh, the organic, as I like to say, posts and, and marketing efforts. So things that you can do as a practice owner, something simple like here at my practice, we have a name for everything. We, we have a name for our coffee maker. We have a name for our fax machine. So, you know, one day Huey, our HP uh, printer and scanner was down for the day. So we so did you, a post. You've really named these. Oh yeah, yeah we've really right. named <laughs> We've got Buzz, the Keurig, um, you know, and, and, and we, we've done a couple posts here and there where we just had a, you know, hey, we're having a tough day. Technology is great when it works. And we've got a ton of interest. And when those patients come in, they, 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 they even bring that up. So um, in your marketing efforts, note that the Gen Zers, again, those age 25 and younger, they like non-idealism. And um, also, shockingly, they are the saving grace. And again, you'll have to check your, your, your polls here, but they're the saving grace of brick and mortar modality of consumerism. So they actually prefer to shop in store. They like to get away and escape into a brick and mortar place for their shopping. Uh, they like to say it's the retail experience that they experience that will drive them to their, their destinations. And so you wanna provide them with a very positive experience. And um, also when it comes to frame lines, now the Gen Zers, there's a reason that 40% of Gen Zers graduate not from high school, but from college debt free and that's because they are intelligently they are they are financially intelligent beyond all generations now the millennials are the forty thousand dollar millionaires and that's the reason why we have a substantial substantial amount of student debt um but uh the gen zers on their hand they're very frugal however they will come to you and they prefer to shop at your optical if a you give them the right experience b you are supporting something that is either A, a social cause or B, environmental, environmentally sustainable product. And that's something I've done is brought in uh, frame lines that were specifically uh, environmentally friendly or sustainable. Um, and then the last thing is, is before they walk in your door, they're already going to know the prices of your you know, closest competitors. So the price must be right. Uh, one thing I forgot to, to share with you about millennials on the, on the whole optical side, is that millennials are driven by discounts. So there's a, a stat that doing a discount of 30% off a product increases your chances of a millennial buying that product by at least 62%. And so now the Gen Zers, they're, they're more about the actual price itself than they are about a discount. But again, keeping in mind just the fact that they are also very big on, on social and environmental causes. So I think a theme I'm hearing from you is don't take a one size fits all approach with patients, both externally and internally. It's a, in the, that's, it's really, these things need to be considered both in your external marketing, but internally as well. The conversations that your staff is having, the conversations that you're having with the patient, taking all that into consideration to make sure that you're, you're making a connection with the, with the patient on what's important to them. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I always say that if you want to see what the future looks like, look at look at your kids. And I have a 15 and a 12-year-old a that's, I mean, if you want to see what the future consumer looks like, look at them and look what, what's important to them. And I always like to say, you don't have to like trends because you hear a lot of angst over different generations and changes in the industry. I always say, you don't have to like trends, just don't ignore them, right? Right, right. Um, Solomon, thanks so much. This is great. This was um I think this is something people really need to hear and understand. Um, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Steve. It's always good to see you, man. You as well. So thanks for listening. And you can find the show notes for these episodes and all others at drstevevargo.com. And thanks again. And we will see you next time.